Coming up tonight on YCN News, an active investigation continues into the cause of four suspicious fires near the downtown Newport area. St. Gaudens National Historic Site is set to host a presentation outlining climate change's potential effects on New Hampshire's historic sites. And insurance consumers may soon have more options and freedom under the Affordable Care Act. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Tuesday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. An active and ongoing investigation into the cause of four suspicious fires near downtown Newport tops our news today. The smell of burned wood from a deliberately set fire at 24 Sullivan Street lingers in the breeze passing through that congested residential neighborhood. Police Chief James Burroughs and Fire Chief Wayne Conroy spoke today with YCN News about this open case. Yes, roughly around 1.30 Saturday morning, uh, we received a call from Newport Dispatch of a uh, dumpster fire at Laurel Street. Upon arrival, uh, they found a fully involved dumpster that was about 10 feet away from a garage. Um, it was a quick knockdown by the fire department on the dumpster. As they were overhauling the dumpster to uh, knock down hot spots, uh, they, we received a call of a fire in back of 84 Maple Street. Um, I actually uh, responded to that. Upon my arrival, we had a fire in the back of a garage that was um, going to the roof section of the garage. The apparatus that we had on scene responded to that um, and knocked down the fire very quickly from, from getting into the attic of that, of that property. After that, we, received, we were cleaning up from that. We received a call that we had a fire on Central Street at a vacant building on Central Street. Got down there, there was a fire in the floor area of that vacant building That's, uh, that was quickly knocked down. Um, that was, uh, fire was in two different spots of that. After that, we, we had a little area that we, you know, we could get things cleaned back up, uh, get the apparatus back in service. Um, I, really, I believe it was right around four o'clock in the morning. Uh, dispatch received another call from a police officer that was in, um, out in patrol, saw a fire in the back of Sullivan Street. Upon arrival, crews had a fully involved vacant house up there that was well involved in the back. Um, we had struck a third alarm that brought in fire apparatus from all over uh, the area towns. Um, and we actually made a very, very quick knockdown of that fire, which um, could have been very, very bad. Um, it's a vacant building, it's a large building, um, and we stopped it from, from going to uh, other buildings at that time. At this time, we don't have a, a total estimate as far as what the damages were. Um, it's still early to determine those numbers. As far as the number of man hours for these investigations, they are uh, very in-depth and very detail-oriented, um, and they very well may take uh, many days, weeks, or even months to complete. Uh, so we are in the early stages of a very active and ongoing investigation into the cause and origin of these four fires. We will update you with more information as it is received, particularly from the State Fire Marshal's Office in Concord. Climate change is an issue that raises as many questions as discussions of it attempt to answer. Now comes another discussion on the topic with a historical twist. St. Gaudens National Historic Site is set to host a presentation outlining climate change's potential effects on New Hampshire's historical sites. Climate change and our cultural resources, how storms, floods, and other changes are threatening our prized historic sites, will explain how New Hampshire's archaeological resources, historic buildings, and cultural landscapes are affected and threatened by sea level rise, coastal erosion, increased flooding, heavy rains, and new insect infestations. The discussion is scheduled for 6 p.m. on Tuesday, June 10th. The presentation will take place at the Visitor Center. There is no charge to attend. Using St. Gaudens as a primary example, Superintendent Rick Kendall, along with Mary Kate Ryan and Edna Fainer from the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, will address the potential effects that climate change may bring on a site such as this. 
As important, next Tuesday's talk will offer solutions that communities with historic and culturally important sites can take to preserve these sites. St. Gaudens National Historic Site is located off State Route 12A, just north of Cornish Windsor Covered Bridge. To learn more, call 603-675-2175 or visit the park website at www.nps.gov slash saga. An announcement has come in from the Jim Rubens campaign. Today, the campaign said that Richard Brothers has been named the new Veterans Coalition director. Brothers already has much experience in military affairs. He is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps as well as a board member of the National Association of State Workforce Agencies. His other experience includes his care for the homeless in New Hampshire and taking on the position of advisor of veterans issues in the Bush and McCain campaigns. Rubin stated his appreciation of Brothers by saying that he will offer already strong support for veterans. Brothers also praised Rubin's devotion to the people of New Hampshire. Brothers says it's an honor to be a part of Rubin's team as he works to become New Hampshire's next U.S. Senator. Hi, this is Anita from Brattleboro Mobile at Exit 3. The store now offers more products you can pick up when you're on the go. Green Mountain Coffee, drinks and snacks, beer and wine, and hopefully your next winning lottery ticket. Also, Brattleboro Mobile has added diesel fuel to go along with the three different grades of superior mobile gasoline. And remember, we have a courteous staff, a brand new look, and a convenient location all at Brattleboro Mobile. See you soon. Brattleboro Mobile, on the roundabout at Exit 3. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Rose Spillman. Soon, insurance consumers may have more options and freedom under the Affordable Care Act. Two new insurance companies, Harvard Pilgrim and Minuteman Health, announced their interest in joining New Hampshire's health care system. Currently, only Anthem is providing coverage in New Hampshire on healthcare.gov. Two other companies are also awaiting review, Assurant Health and Maine Community Health. Maine Community CEO Kevin Lewis says that this participation is good for New Hampshire. Healthcare consumers will now have more options or are able to stay with their current providers. All that is standing in the way now is approval from the state and federal government of all five insurance companies. The Renaissance Shop, located in the Lake Sunapee Region VNA building on Newport Road in New London, brings back to life high quality items for every taste and budget. The Renaissance Shop is always seeking donations to keep the inventory varied and give you a reason to come back again and again. Donations are tax deductible and proceeds bring new life to the vital services of our DNA. The Renaissance Shop, new beginnings to more than you can imagine. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next few days and then move on to high school sports. Thanks, Rose. Tonight we have a 70% chance of rain before 9 p.m. and thunderstorms between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Lows will be in the upper 50s with winds around 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow we have a 30% chance of showers before noon with cloudy skies and a high of 71 degrees. Wednesday night we'll have calm winds with temperatures around 55 degrees and a 30% chance of rain before 2 a.m. Thursday we have a 70% chance of precipitation after noon with highs in the 70s. Thursday night will become cloudy with a 40% chance of rain and lows in the mid-50s. We have a chance of showers for the next few days and we can see here that a large storm is approaching for tonight. In our national view, you can see the storm as well as one brewing in the Midwest that is expected to reach us also. Now let's see what's coming up on our community calendar. Tomorrow in New Hampshire, the Charlestown Select Board will meet at 6.30 p.m. In Lebanon, the City Council meeting will be held at 7 p.m. In Winchester, the Board of Selectmen will meet at 7 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Our local high school teams are already into their tournament games. There are some exciting games to expect tomorrow. Number 2 Hanover is set to take on number 7 Merrimack tomorrow at Hanover High School at 5.30 p.m. This is part of the girls lacrosse Division 2 tournament. In Division 3 girls lacrosse, number 5 Lebanon will battle number 12 Pelham at Lebanon High School at 5 p.m. In girls softball, number 3 Sunapee is facing off with number 14 Dairyfield tomorrow at Sunapee High School at 4 p.m. Be sure to check out one of these games and cheer on your local teams. 